Coming up in today's show, the latest joint venture in the auto industry beats China's growing appetite for SUVs. 2011 proved to be a dismal year for the energy sector in China. We'll give you a breakdown on how the companies did and what the future might hold. And with leaders from the BRICS countries meeting in India this week, we'll talk with Bill Antholis of the Brookings Institution about how developing countries will shape the global economy of tomorrow. Hello and welcome to China Biz. I'm Mark Dry in Beijing, bringing you the latest insights on the Chinese market. Before we get to our feature stories, let's take a quick look back at this week's business news. U.S. exports to China reached a record 103.9 billion U.S. dollars in 2011. 30 states in the U.S. now list China as one of their top three export destinations. A report by the U.S. China Business Council revealed that the total U.S. exports to China rose 542 percent, while exports to the rest of the world increased by only 80 percent over the same period. But while imports to China from the U.S. have grown, so has exports to the U.S. The trade imbalance between the two countries last year was at its highest ever at 272 billion U.S. dollars. China Eastern Airlines is partnering up with Australia's Qantas Airways in a 50-50 joint venture to create a low-cost carrier based in Hong Kong. Talks between Qantas and Malaysia Airlines to create a similar venture broke down earlier this month. Meanwhile, Singapore Airlines low-cost carrier Scoot announced it will begin flights between Singapore and Tianjin in August. Air China issued a downbeat outlook for air travel this year, stating that passenger growth may shrink to 4.4 percent due to a slowing economy. That's compared to a 16 percent passenger growth rate in 2011. Air China posted a net income decline of 41 percent last year to 1.1 billion U.S. dollars as fuel costs rose 44 percent due to higher prices and an increased number of flights. Chinese telecommunications equipment maker Huawei has been blocked by the Australian government from bidding for contracts for the country's national broadband network due to security concerns. The firm has had deals blocked in the past by the U.S. amid allegations that Huawei is closely linked to the Chinese government. Australia's 38 billion U.S. dollar national broadband network plans to connect 93 percent of households, schools and businesses with high-speed internet service by 2020. And Apple CEO Tim Cook met with Chinese government officials in Beijing this week as the American company faces a host of problems in the country. Cook met with Vice Premier Li Keqiang, and while Apple declined to say what was discussed, the world's largest technology company is battling Shenzhen-based ProView in a highly publicized dispute over the iPad trademark in China and has faced criticism over the treatment of workers by its local suppliers. China is Apple's second largest market, but its mobile phone business is losing ground to competitors like Samsung. Its latest iPad product has yet to be released on the mainland. Time now to take a look at China's car market and international players looking to get a foot in what is now the largest auto market in the world have no option but to team up with Chinese automakers. The latest in a string of joint ventures in the auto industry here is an agreement between Jaguar Land Rover and Chinese domestic brand Cherry. Steffi Chung takes a look at how such a venture would fit into China's demand for SUVs. It could be the largest investment in a Sino-foreign joint venture in the history of China's auto industry. If approved, the deal between India-owned Jaguar Land Rover and Chinese domestic automaker Cherry would be worth 17.5 billion yuan, or 2.8 billion U.S. dollars. It's an unlikely match of internationally recognized luxury and a Chinese partner with just 15 years in the business and far less clout. Cherry? If Cherry and Jagger joined up, I won't buy the car. <laughs> I think it will, it will have definitely an effect on the brand of Jaguar Land Rover because who you're partnering with. You know, Cherry, who's Cherry? But what happens at the end of the day is the two partners, they both have interests that they want to achieve. For Jaguar Land Rover, the deal would mean the green light to localize production, bringing down manufacturing costs and evading high import taxes. The joint venture would give its owner, the India-owned Tata Motors, indirect access to the world's largest car market. Cherry, on the other hand, would enjoy brand elevation. The latest agreement comes relatively late to an already long list of JVs in the auto industry, 
These joint ventures account for nearly three-quarters of the passenger car market in China and nearly 60 percent of the passenger vehicle market, of which SUVs are a part. I see a fair amount of SUVs on the road. If I could drive one, I would. They're big, and I like big cars. The SUV market has shown unparalleled growth in China through the last decade. In 2010, sales of SUVs grew more than 80 percent to 1.32 million units. And last year, sales increased another 20 percent to around 1.6 million units. Sales have been largely attributed to those buying their second car, especially the growing elite eager to show off their wealth. One well, of the big SUVs shows presence, power, uh, status, uh, you know, I'm on top of the world, uh, don't mess with me. So. China's appetite for SUVs is likely to be fueling the Jaguar Land Rover and Cherry joint venture. Industry experts speculate the JV's first endeavor will be to locally produce already established SUV models, like the popular Evoque. This is Beijing during rush hour. It's where the roads become a bit like a car show, and you'll see luxury brands like Audi, Mercedes, Porsche, and their SUV models. A few examples of the bustling SUV market here in China, and how international and domestic automakers are capitalizing on this trend. And factors you'd expect to curb the demand for big, such as rising gas prices, a lottery system in Beijing that limits the amount of vehicles on the road, this traffic jam. These factors aren't deterring SUV sales to China's wealthiest, nor are price tags. This imported edition of the Jaguar Range Rover goes for around 2.2 million renminbi, or nearly 350,000 U.S. dollars. Salespeople at this dealership in Beijing, who asked not to be filmed, say they sell around 40 Jaguar SUVs a month, a figure that has remained steady since the store's opening last June. Jaguar Land Rover sold 42,000 units of its luxury sedans and premium SUVs in China last year, up 60 percent from 2010. Its global performance rose by 18 percent. And demand is likely to rise with future China-made additions, which could knock tens of thousands of dollars off the price tag. But there are potential roadblocks to China's ravenous SUV market. The gas-guzzling vehicles aren't aligned with the government's plans to reduce carbon emissions. In February, the central government released a draft for its Corporate Average for Fuel Consumption, or CAFC, standards for passenger vehicles. The draft aims to encourage manufacturers to produce models with the fuel consumption value of less or equal to 2.5 liters per 100 kilometers, equivalent to 94 miles per gallon. If a model were to meet this threshold, its production numbers would be multiplied by three to lower the overall CAFC result. For Jaguar and Land Rover, most of their sales are the SUVs in China, imported SUVs. And obviously, the engine displacement you know, is probably at least 3.0 and above. If this CAFC is implemented, you know, it's not going to be a matter of approving the joint venture itself. It's, it's going to be are your products going to meet these regulations? If so, then, you know, then fine. But if not, then they're going to have, you know, a problem. China also plans to tighten passenger vehicle fuel consumption limits by requiring vehicles to have an average fuel consumption of 7 liters per 100 kilometers, or 34 miles per gallon, by 2015. Steffi Chung with that report, and we'll be bringing you more in-depth stories on China's auto industry in April. That's when Beijing will hold the annual China Auto Show. It's also when Lamborghini is expected to reveal a design of its first SUV.